The Honey Bee's Temperature, Mosgua Beekeeping Association One of the fantastic capabilities of bees is their ability to produce warmth. But the honey bee doesn't produce warmth for itself. It produces warmth for the sake of the colony and its survival. It is the honey bee's socialist tendencies that has allowed it to survive and thrive during the last fifty million years. They have survived the age of the dinosaur as well as many more other advanced species of animals. Just like humans are most comfortable in temperatures around 20 degrees Celsius, bees also have a preferred temperature. Under normal conditions, a bee prefers the temperature of the surrounding area. And if the temperature in the surrounding area is between 10 and 38 degrees Celsius, it's acceptable and the bee will not do anything to regulate its temperature. In certain situations, though, the bee will warm up. For example, if it is preparing to fly, then it warms up. To warm up, the bee begins to make small contractions of its largest muscles, the wing muscles. So the wing muscles begin to vibrate. The contractions or movements are so small that you cannot see the wings move. Think of it as when you get a cold chill and you shiver. But bees cannot function below a certain temperature. If a bee's temperature falls to 7 degrees Celsius or lower, then its muscles become so stiff that it cannot move. It has been paralyzed by the cold. If this happens, it can have catastrophic consequences for the bee. For example, if the sunlight on a cold winter day reflects off the snow, the bees might get confused and want to fly out. Some of the more daring bees warm up their wing muscles and take off, but the temperature difference soon catches up with them and they have to make an emergency landing to warm up their wing muscles again. But if the bee lands on snow, it will get cold so quickly that it becomes paralyzed, cannot fly, and eventually dies. Also, when a forager bee is out to collect pollen and nectar, its temperature can drop. Then it makes a short stop while it warms up the wing muscles again so it can fly home to its hive. Sometimes you might see a bee sitting on a flower or in the grass and it appears to be sleeping, but it's more likely that it's sitting and warming up its wing muscles to finish its flight home. Bees don't normally fly if the temperature is under 8.4 degrees Celsius. If the bee has been sitting still in the back of the hive and been inactive, then it has the same body temperature as the rest of the hive. It can easily be 15 degrees Celsius at the outermost frames, for example, so the bee would not be immediately able to fly. It can take from one and a half to three minutes before the bee has warmed up its wing muscles enough to fly. 80% of bees must warm up their wing muscles to 34.1 degrees Celsius before they can fly. 20% of bees are able to fly with a temperature at 27 degrees Celsius. So which bees are able to fly with a cold start? Of course, it's the guard bees that need to be able to fly quicker than the other bees. Bees that are only a couple of days old are not able to fly. They have wings, but their nervous system isn't fully developed to make the vibrating motion needed to warm up the wing muscles. Another situation that can be dangerous for a bee is when it has a job as a water carrier. If a bee takes in a lot of cold water, about 40 milligrams, in its honey stomach, then in theory it can lower its body temperature to a point so cold, under 10 degrees Celsius, that it cannot fly back to the hive, so it doesn't try to. Bees generally try to find warmer water, such as surface water, water droplets on plants and flowers, or as in the picture here, water on small stones, where the stone has been warmed by the sun. But bees take care not to drink too much water so they can stay warm enough to fly back to the hive. It is also possible for the bee to become too cold when it is sitting in the cluster around the queen during winter. The cluster begins to form already when the surrounding temperature is under 14 degrees Celsius in the hive. 
The colder the surrounding temperature is, the more the bees huddle together. In the middle of the cluster is the queen, along with some nurse bees, some housekeeping bees, and some cells containing pupae. The bees try to keep the temperature around the cells containing pupae at around 35 degrees Celsius. The temperature is maintained by insulating the cells. To do this, the bees around the queen and the housekeeping bees sit in a tight cluster, completely still, with their heads pointed towards the cells containing pupae and their wings slightly spread. By doing this, the bees create several layers of insulation from 2 up to 7 or 8 centimeters thick. The outermost layer of the cluster tries to preserve the warmth produced by the bees innermost in the cluster. The bees near the middle of the cluster eat the food in the nearby cells and from that generate warmth through the process of breaking down that food. By breaking down the glucose in the food, carbon dioxide and water are generated. When it becomes so cold that the bee's own body heat isn't enough to maintain the temperature around the pupae cells at 35 degrees Celsius and the temperature at the edge of the cluster is 8 degrees Celsius, then the bees in the middle of the cluster eat more of the stored food. Bees don't get overweight or fat if they eat more. If the bees don't move, then this extra food consumption causes the thyroid to produce even more body heat. In the middle of the cluster, the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius, but the temperature decreases the more the bees move to the periphery of the cluster. If the cluster is very large, then there's a lot more to insulate. When it is 35 degrees in the middle of the cluster, then the temperature of the bees at the outside of the cluster can drop under 7 degrees Celsius, which means that the bees become paralyzed by the cold and fall to the bottom of the hive. There is a limit to how thick that insulating layer of bees can be if the bees at the edges of the cluster should be spared a cold death when the temperatures get very cold. Sometime during December there will be a period of time where there are no pupae. During this time the bees keep the temperature of the hive around 20 degrees Celsius. The queen and bees in the center of the cluster can tolerate this temperature. However, the bees in the outermost of the cluster can become too cold and die. When you know how much bees in, in the cluster can insulate, then you can calculate how thick the insulating layer of bees in the cluster can be when the temperature in the center of the cluster drops to 20 degrees Celsius. There are approximately 15,000 bees. If there are 25,000 bees, then the outer layer of the cluster can become so thick that the bees at the edge die. But let's put one myth to rest now. It has been said many times that at certain intervals the cluster breaks up and the bees switch places so that the bees that were on the outer edges of the cluster can move to the middle to get warmed up again. This is not true. The cluster does not break up until the weather is somewhat warmer and the temperature in the middle of the cluster is high enough that it isn't necessary for the bees to insulate with the same intensity. When this happens, the bees might switch places and the cluster might move to another place in the hive where there is more food. But as long as the temperature is under minus 5 degrees Celsius, then the bees sit in a tight cluster, not moving for fear of being paralyzed by the cold and falling to their death. Bees can also overheat. If they are flying in warm weather, the contractions of the wing muscles can mean that the bee becomes overheated. Bees cannot sweat like people do to cool down, but they can make other adjustments to lower their temperature. First, if the bee becomes too warm, it can fly with its legs hanging down instead of tucking them up against the stomach. This will lower the bee's temperature by one degree Celsius. If that isn't enough, the bee ingests some liquid and holds it between its tongue and rib cage, or spreads the liquid over the surface of its legs. By doing this, it can lower its temperature 3 to 4 degrees Celsius. Bees can fly in temperatures of up to 47 degrees Celsius. This was just an introduction to bees and their temperature. If you would like to see more information, check out some of the other training videos available from the Mosgore Beekeepers Association for Holistic Beekeeping at www.mosb.dk. 
At mosb.dk, you also have the option to become a supporting member of the Mosgoa Beekeeping Association so that you have access to knowledge and inspiration year-round. Only Varroa mites use without contributing anything positive, and we want to have as few Varroa as possible. In this video, you learned about the collective habits of the bees, which is their greatest advantage. That bees thrive between temperatures of 10 to 38 degrees Celsius. That the wing muscles must be warmed up before flying. That the wing muscles are warmed up through small contractions of the muscles that it takes one and a half to three minutes to warm up the wing muscles, that guard bees are able to fly at a lower warmed up temperature than other bees, that bees who are two to three days old are not developed enough yet to fly, that bees at a temperature under seven degrees Celsius become paralyzed by the cold, that bees fly when the temperature is above 8.4 degrees Celsius, that bees begin to form the winter cluster when the temperature is around 14 degrees Celsius. That if bees at the outermost part of the cluster become paralyzed by the cold, they will fall to the floor and die. That at times where there are no pupa cells, the temperature in the cluster is only around 20 degrees Celsius. That a winter cluster contains about 15,000 bees because the rest of the bees become paralyzed by the cold during the coldest periods. That when it is coldest, the bees don't shift their position within the cluster. In short, you learn that bees are very capable. The Temperature of a Honeybee, Moscow Beekeeping Association.